Welcome to Science Access. In today's class, we'll be talking about DNA and we'll be following this outline. Introduction to DNA, where we define DNA, we'll talk about a little bit about gene and all that. We'll talk about the structure of DNA. And we'll talk about the basic units, such as the nucleotide. Then we'll talk, also talk about the significance or the importance of DNA. What do you understand by the term DNA? DNA is a molecule found in all living organisms. It actually carries genetic information necessary for growth, development, functioning, and reproduction of this organism. It should be noted that DNA contains the information that is actually transferred from the parent to the offspring. Note that a segment of DNA is regarded as gene, and the DNA is found in the nucleus. The nucleus is found inside the cell. Note that DNA was first identified in the 1860s by Friedrich Mischer. Take a look at this picture. The son looks like the father because the father has transmitted genetic material to the son. The same applies to the mother and the daughter. Note that the function of DNA is to transmit or to carry genetic material or information from the parents to their offspring. Let's talk about the structure of DNA. As you can see from the diagram, the DNA is like a twisted ladder. This structure is called a double helix structure. The structure of DNA was first described by James Watson and Francis Crick in 1953. Now take a look at this twisted ladder-like structure. Let's unwind it and you have a structure like this. Now this is just like a ladder. The DNA is made up of two strands. Now take a look at the first strand and the second strand. The DNA is made up of two strands and each of these strands is made up of many nucleotides. This is the reason why they say DNA is made up of two strands of polynucleotide. Each of these strands has many nucleotides. In other words, the nucleotide is the monomer, that is the building block or the unit which builds up the DNA. Now, take a look at this DNA structure. You can see the first nucleotide, the second nucleotide, the third nucleotide, the fourth nucleotide, the fifth, and the sixth. Now, you have many nucleotides in the DNA structure. Now let's take a look at a particular nucleotide. Now take a look at the nucleotide you are seeing for the You can see the phosphate group, the nitrogenous base, and the sugar. So the component of nucleotide is the phosphate group, the sugar, as well as the nitrogenous base. In DNA, the nitrogenous base are of four types. As you can see on your screen, they include the adenine, the guanine, thiamine and cytosine. Note that the adenine always combines with the thiamine, while the cytosine always combines with the guanine. Now let's explain the full DNA structure. As you can see on your screen, the DNA structure is made up of two strands of polynucleotide. This is one strand and this is the second strand. Polynucleotide means each strand is made up of many nucleotides. Now take a look at the nucleotide in the first strand. One, two, three, four. It is actually more than that in real DNA. Now take a look, a look at the nucleotide in the second strand. One, two, three, four. Now, each of these nucleotides that you can see is made up of phosphate group, sugar, and a nitrogenous base. And as you are aware, the nitrogenous base are, are, are of four types. We have the adenine, we have the thiamine, we have the guanine, and we have the cytosine. Now, Take a look at this pairing. The adenine is always combining with the thiamine, while the guanine is always combining with the cytosine. Between the adenine and the thiamine is a double hydrogen bond, as you can see from the diagram, and between the guanine and the cytosine is a triple hydrogen bond, as you can see from the diagram. Now, take a look at the diagram again. The backbone of this DNA structure is an alternative phosphate and sugar group. They are alternative forming a pole. So we have two poles, the first pole and the second pole. And the first pole is comprised of alternative phosphate group, sugar, phosphate group, sugar, phosphate group, and sugar. Now, we are having this alternative structure as the backbone. We know that the nitrogenous base are actually attached, joining both of this uh, um, pole together. Now the last aspect of the DNA structure we are going to discuss is the fact that the two strands of DNA 
actually run anti-parallel. Now, one is running in one direction and the other is running in the opposite direction. Now, take a look at the diagram you can see on your screen. One is running in the direction of 3' prime to 5', prime, while the other is running in the direction of 5' prime to 3'. Prime. Let's explain 3' prime to 5'. Prime. Now, take a look at this sugar molecule. We number the carbon atom in this sugar starting from the position where they attach to the nitrogenous base. Now, it is numbered in the clockwise direction. So, let's number this first strand. We have the carbon 1, the carbon 2, the carbon 3, the carbon 4, the carbon 5. Now, note that phosphate is attached, phosphate group is attached to carbon 3 and carbon 5. Now, let's number, so this is actually 3 prime to 5 prime. Now, let's number the other strand. We have the carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 3. So, phosphate is attached to this carbon here. We have the carbon 4 and carbon 5. Phosphate is attached to carbon 5. So, we now have this as the 5 prime to 3 prime. This is how we get this value of 3 prime to 5 prime or 5 prime to 3 prime. Now, take a look at the whole structure. The whole structure of this first strand is actually 3 prime to 5 prime. And the whole structure of this second strand is 5 prime to 3 prime. They are running in the opposite direction. Even look at this phosphate group. It's actually in this direction. And look at this. This is in this direction. Also note that the bond between the phosphate and the sugar group is a phosphodiester bond. Now, let's take a look at the importance or significance of DNA structure. We all know that this DNA structure contains the genes which carries character and transmit it from one generation to the other. This is the end of this lecture. Please subscribe to support this channel. Thank you.